The reason we were able to do this faster than we normally do was we put a lot of resources, both human as well as financial, essentially focusing all of our scientific efforts on trying to find a vaccine. And when we do that all over the world, we are able to do things much more quickly now because we have the biotechnology and years, more than a hundred years of vaccine research that allows us to understand how to develop vaccines. So it may seem very fast to people and it was done at a quicker speed, but it was done in the way that we always develop vaccines. We just did it at a higher rate. So a great question is, can the vaccine give you COVID-19? And the answer is no, because that would be like me saying, if I give you four tires, you have a car. You don't have a car if you just have four tires, you only have four tires. So all we're doing is giving you one protein that sits on a surface of that virus that your body develops an immune response to. We're not giving you the whole virus. You will not be infected with coronavirus by this vaccine. I think there is not enough information to really be able to definitely answer that question. My own personal biases, I think people should because we don't know the level of immunity that you've actually gotten from your infection. And we don't typically measure that in individuals to be able to tell them you have this many of the right kinds of immune cells and antibodies to protect you. So the safest thing in my mind to do is to take the vaccine now, will some people who've had COVID before who take the vaccine, will they have side effects from the vaccine? Of course. And because if your body has seen a foreign germ before, it has cells that sometimes remember that germ. And sometimes those cells like to come back and there is what we call a little bit more vigorous response to that. I don't think it's going to be anything that people cannot manage. And I think it's not going to be anything serious. And I do think that people who've had COVID before should get a vaccine. I think we really have to examine 2020. How has this year been for all of us? Too many people have suffered. Too many people have been hospitalized. Too many people have died. Our schools have been disrupted. Our normal workflow has been disrupted. Our entire lives have been disrupted by this pandemic. And the only way we're going to get out of it is when we develop enough immunity in all of us to protect us from getting sick from this. One way to do that faster is to take a vaccine. So if you ask me, do I want 2021 to be like 2020? The answer is no. I want to take a vaccine so that we can get back to normal faster. Yeah, so when you take a shot, how do you know you're protected? Well, what we know from the studies so far, and there'll be more information that will become available in the next month or so, is, is that about seven days after the second vaccine, you really have those very high levels of antibodies that I talked about, those neutralizing antibodies, the ones that stop the virus. And we think once you reach that level, you've reached a level of protection. So that's what we're really looking at is, so for the Pfizer vaccine, that would be day 28, which would be seven days after your second dose on day 21. And for the Moderna vaccine, that would be day 35 for seven days after your vaccine on day 28. That's when we can really be confident and say, you've reached the maximum what we think you're gonna reach. I think it's important to know that we can't study everything in one study. And these studies were specifically designed to say, will we prevent disease? They were not specifically designed to say, will we prevent infection? Now, what does that mean? It means that people didn't get sick. They didn't have to go to the hospital. When they got the vaccine, 
they didn't get sick. Now, we don't know whether they got infected and it was a small infection or not. And we don't know if they were infected, can they pass it to someone else? So right now, for the foreseeable future, we still all need to wear masks. We need to wash our hands. We need to social distance. We need to do all the right things to prevent the spread from this. And then we will see as time goes on, as more and more people get vaccinated, will we start to bend the curve? Forget about flattening the curve. We want to bend the curve down. And we'll see, can we do that? And are we seeing fewer infections? And then we'll know if the vaccine is going to prevent infection. I think sometime in mid-2021, we will have some information on this to be able to really answer that question. Can we prevent infection? Can we prevent it from passing from one person to another? And when's the right time to take your mask off? I will be getting the vaccine as soon as they give it to me, and I promise to take it, and I'll even do it on camera so others can see. I think this is a great question and a very fair one to ask, and one that we should always know. And unfortunately, it's just going to take time for us to understand that. We need to continue to follow the 43,000 plus people in the Pfizer study, the 30 plus thousand people in the Moderna study, the ones in the Janssen study, the AstraZeneca study, and all of the vaccine studies. We need to follow these people for a year, sometimes longer, just to be sure in our own minds there aren't any other unexpected side effects. So the answer, the honest answer is, we don't have longer term information. But I think the real question you have to ask yourself is, do I want 2021 to be like 2020 and all the suffering, or am I willing to take a chance not knowing all of the information so that fewer people will die? We have 250,000 deaths in the United States. We are making our way easily up to a half a million people that could die from this disease if we don't get it under control. We don't want to see so much suffering and so much dying, and we want our lives to come back to normal. So I think it's a great question, and the honest answer is we need more time. But I want people to weigh the risks of not taking a vaccine versus the benefits of taking a vaccine which is going to get us to where we want to go faster and are you willing to take that chance with me because i'm going to do it so one of the important things to know is is the vaccine been tested in every kind of person including underrepresented populations and i can tell you in cincinnati we made a vigorous effort to make sure that when we enrolled 185 people in our study, that they looked like the epidemic here in our city, and they did. Almost 50% of the people were from underrepresented populations. So we had many, many people who were Latino, Hispanic, Black, African American, who were all part of our study. And so what we found so far is the response is exactly the same. It doesn't matter who you are, where you came from, what your background is. There aren't any more side effects, and the benefits are the same. What's interesting to me is, is that the, re the responses, the side effects, are actually a little less in people who are over the age of 65. Now, I like to believe it's because we're just hardy souls, and you know we're tough, so we don't report very much. But the other side of the coin is, is that their immune response may not be quite as vigorous as when you're younger, so you just might not get quite as sick. But I think what's good to know is, is that different ages, different groups, this vaccine has been tested. It's been shown to be beneficial. I understand that many people feel that they can't trust things, that the history of studies and experiments, the history of Tuskegee, the discrimination and racism in our society 
has made it hard for people to trust. And I recognize that and I understand that. And all I can say is, will you take a chance on me? Because I believe in all of us and I think only together can we protect our communities and ourselves. And it's really important that everyone be part of the solution. And this is a way to empower communities to say, I wanna take back our lives and to decrease illness that is always a little bit higher in certain communities than others. So let's talk about the process of how we learn about this vaccine and what all kinds of studies we did and clinical trials and was it rigorous enough? Were we careful enough? Did we do everything we normally do? And the answer is yes, we did. We started out by identifying the virus in January. Then we immediately went to the test tube to guess what we thought would be the most likely spot that would be the best spot to pick for us to build a vaccine. Then we went to animals and tested to see if in fact they developed the response and they did. And then we started to go to humans first, initially with just doses to see, is this okay? Does it make you sick? Do you have side effects? And what are the responses that are being generated? And then we went to the second phase, or phase two, where we tested different doses to see, is this dose a better dose? Is this dose a better dose? Better meaning which one's the most effective, which one's the safest? And in fact, in one of the studies, one of the doses was too high. And so they said, we can't use that dose that gives too many side effects. We're gonna use a lower dose. And then we went to the phase three studies. Those are the very large studies that are being done now that are being reported on by Pfizer, by Moderna, 43,000, 30,000 people, getting half of them getting the placebo, half of them getting the vaccine. That study is a standard way in which we always look at vaccines. And we know from many, many years of vaccine studies that the most important side effects that occur with vaccines happen within the first 57 days. And so the FDA wanted to be sure that there was two months follow-up after the last vaccine people have received to be sure that this was really gonna be safe. Beyond that time period, there are very few side effects from the vaccines that we've tested over years and years and decades. So we went through the very same rigor of all of this and the number of people who have been getting vaccines is very typical of most of the vaccines, the childhood vaccines that we have used over many years. It's not uncommon at all to have studies that eventually wind up being 30, 40, 50,000 people getting vaccinated, and then the FDA going to approve that vaccine saying, yes, you may use this because it does in fact help people and it's safe. So we really went through from the very beginning to discovery, to phase one, phase two, phase three. Every step along the way has been the same, what we've done, we just put lots of scientists, lots of physicians, lots of staff, lots of money into it so we could do it very quickly. And when you put all those things together, you can do things faster.